So the plan today was, as I mentioned on last week's vlog, was to hook up with a very excitable chap and do another loop of the Gatineau Park and um, unpack his story a little bit. He is a very interesting chap. Uh, maybe we'll do that next week. The reason why we're not doing it this week is tropical depression, tropical storm, tropical something or other. It's a confluence of a low pressure system and Tropical Storm Debbie? Yeah, I think that's right. Anyways, forecasting over 100 millimeters of rain in the National Capital Region, which is excessive. In fact, I think this hour, as it currently rains, as it's currently coming down, I think um, we're expecting 10 millimeters per hour uh, over the afternoon. So I'm not riding outside. I did bang out a session on Zwift. Um, clearly not as much fun as riding outside. So what are we gonna do instead? Let's do a midterm review of these Rafa shoes. The yeses and the noes, the hits and the misses. What do I like? What am I not so impressed with? Let's unpack that a little bit. So first things first, when we come to these shoes, these Rafa Pro Team lace-ups, um, all of the items I'm gonna show you, three pairs of shoes, well, three individual shoes from three pairs, have all been sourced by me personally with my own shekels. So my view on these shoes is not clouded by any endorsement or sponsorship. So the aforementioned Rafa Pro Team lace-ups going to do a bit of a comparison with the Empire VR 90s and also throwing into the mix the very high-end and pricey Shimano S-Fire RC 9s. Now you might question whether or not it's fair comparing these Pro Team lace-ups to the Shimano S-Fires but I, I think it is a fair comparison. These cost me around $600 Canadian. Very expensive shoes and the new edition of this one isn't uh, any cheaper. I looked uh, online recently and they're about $650, $700 Canadian. Very expensive pair of shoes. These ones, I think uh, you can get these on the Rafa website. Not on sale, they're around $430 Canadian. I didn't pay that, I got these on uh, sale and then I got some kind of coupon. So I paid around $230, $240 for these. I'll come back to the reason why I'm mentioning the price of these in comparison to the S-Fires. These Empire VR 90s, who, um, I brought these out because these are also lace-ups and I uh, wanted to do a bit of a comparison between the two different styles of lace-ups. 
These obviously, you know, I'm not comparing apples to apples with these lace-ups. These are pure road-centric shoes. Gonna be lighter, gonna be stiffer than these, which are cyclocross gravel mountain bike style shoes, obviously with the Shimano uh, SPD cleats and, uh, and not, what are these, Lokios? So yeah. Okay, what do I like about these pro team shoes? First of all, pure aesthetics. I really like the look of these shoes. That was the first thing that drew me to them. Uh, you may or may not know, they offer two styles of these pro team shoes. They offer the lace up and they also offer these with boa dials. Those are even more expensive than these. This weave can be a little problematic, but I'll get into that in a second. I also really like the weight of these. Um, maybe it's because they remove the dials for the lace-ups. Uh, you shave a few ounces here or there, um, but these are uh, these are very light. I like the stiffness, uh, full carbon sole, and I like this little uh, plastic heel cup contraption, which really keeps the uh, heel planted in the shoe. For a very light, stiff shoe, these are relatively comfortable. They're actually uh, one of the more comfortable pair of road shoes that I've used of late, and. Um, you know, I've talked about these before, these S-Fires. Super expensive, super stiff, super dope, but not the most comfortable shoe on the planet. Okay, let's get into some of the misses with the lace-up shoes. Like I said going in, I read a lot about these shoes, watched a lot of YouTube videos. So when you source lace-ups, you're limited to the amount of adjustments that you can make once you've already tightened these up. I knew that going in, it's the same for these, it's the same for these. That's fine. I typically don't need to adjust my shoe tension too much on a ride. If that's a problem for you, if you race or if you do long stage races, uh, maybe you want to go for a BOA dial to make those little micro adjustments. The power weave exterior on these I knew was going to be problematic. I knew it was going to be tough to clean these. Already I've got some tire rub smudges on the front which is damn near impossible to remove. But okay, is that an issue? Sure, if you're really into pearly white shoes and you want to keep them immaculate, this may not be the best shoe for you. These guys tend to pull and hold on to everything. It looks like I got some ketchup on this one that's not coming off. So I'm not totally enthused with that type of material from a cleaning perspective. From a comfort perspective, they're fine. One of the major gripes I have is when it comes to the tongue material, I, I kind of like a little bit of padding on the tongue, especially around the top of my foot. When you start to really tighten these up, just a little bit of protection that would be nice. To be quite honest, this is really disappointing. The tongue, I don't know what it's made out of. A little bit of plastic and what looks like a little bit of paper. Now again, I guess they're trying to shave weight on here. They don't want to add any padding or materials to the tongue. It really can't be that difficult. If you look at the Giro VR 90s, this material here looks like leather or some kind of leather wannabe like the rest of the shoe but it's got a nice padding on the interior. The tongue on these S-Fires is actually incorporated into the body of the shoe. These have a little, a modicum, a little bit more than the Rafa, a little bit less than the Juros, but they've got a little bit of padding here on the top of the foot, which again helps um, when you start to ratchet down these boas. So there's absolutely nothing on the Rafa shoes. That's a little disappointing. The other thing is quality control. Now again, if you were to buy these brand new from the website, these are 430 bucks plus tax. Rafa, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the quality control on these S-Fires, which are $200 more than the Rafa's, is excellent. They just look like a well-constructed finished shoe. These ones look like Rafa's still trying to work stuff out. Some of the glue that's used on the top here to attach to this little sock type material which you hide the laces under. The glue is bled through on the top here. You know, quality control, you can do better. It may not matter to a lot of you, but sometimes I take a look inside the shoe to see what the construction is like. And the construction of this shoe, it's like they've really tried to cut corners and the stitching and the construction on the inside, it's, it's a little poor. 
The other thing is padding. So these Rafa shoes do not have any heel retention material on the inside. Now maybe it's because they've got this nice sexy plastic heel cup to keep your heel in place. The Shimano S Fires have some kind of slightly abrasive material on the inside here. Again, it's the little touches that you get and you expect to get when you spend $600 on a pair of shoes. Padding around the top here is fairly minimal. Rafa, again, shaving weight and maybe cost from the manufacturer of this shoe, um, but it's minimal versus the VR90s where the padding is extensive. Not only is it deep along the top here, it goes further down in the shoe to kind of cuddle and cradle your foot on the inside. Now again, different intended purpose, but still way more comfortable than these ones. And certainly these are way more comfortable than these ones. Different intended purposes. I know, I get it. You can just tell that this is a far superior quality, better construction, better materials than the Rafa shoe. Again, like I said earlier, it's like they're still trying to figure stuff out with this generation of shoe, but come on, it's been a while. You've had these pro team shoes out in one form or another for quite a while. In fact, I think when Rafa first started to make shoes, they relied heavily on the lasts from Juro. I think for all intents and purposes, they were basically Juro shoes with uh, a little bit of Rafa design. So I guess it comes down to the question of would I purchase these Rafa Pro Team lace-ups again? No, I don't think I would. Um, kind of disappointed in the build quality and um, I do like the design. I think it's great. I think it's different. Would that be enough to get me to return to these shoes? I don't think so. So there you go. Do with that information as you see fit. Have a great week. We will regroup. Take care.